Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we are going to go deep into self-exploration so that you can gain some very deep insights that will help you in uncovering your life path, which is the cornerstone of selecting your course or coaching topics. And it's going to help you to determine your business direction. Now, this process has helped me and others with crafting our most enjoyable and aligned life path so that you're creating your dream life and business that is in alignment with your purpose and your mission. Now, the reason that I love doing these type of exercises and have made them part of the foundational work is because I have found that it has helped numerous people save so much time and energy when creating and building their dream life and business. It's going to help you to maintain your focus and avoid distractions and interruptions. And it also helps, and this is what a, a big one for me, it helps me to avoid that shiny object syndrome. I don't know about you, but that one has always gotten my way. Now, in the download section, you're going to find the Life Path Journal Workbook. And I recommend that you take some time and go through each one of these sections. Now, you can do it one at a time, or you can go through the complete workbook in one setting, like a, over a course of three or four hours. But what I want to advise you to do is I want you to go through this process, whichever way suits you best. But then, after you complete it, set it aside for a day or so and then go back to it and revise it. Because if you're like me, as you go through this the first time, you're gonna have new thoughts and new insights coming up along the way. And when you go back and you refine it, some of those sections, well, you're able to define them and become even more clear on each one of them. So you decide whether you wanna take a weekend and work through this, or if you wanna take small breaks, and do each one section at a time. You know, you can work through each section in 30 minute increments or an hour, but whatever suits you. So I recommend, I recommend that you just find some quiet time and go through this. But what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take a look at the workbook. So in the Life Path workbook, it's based on the Japanese term Ikigai which is roughly translated as your true calling. Now, the term true calling can also be your life purpose or your life's work. The object of the Life Path Workbook is to help you uncover your passions, your profession, your mission, and your contribution. The result of this process is that you are going to find your sweet spot for your life path which is the intersection of your passions, your joys, your interests, your abilities, and your unique attributes. When you can create and build a business that is in alignment with your true life path, it is usually a winning combination. And that is the keys to your success. This life path workbook is designed to help you find deeper meaning in your life, which most will say helps them to be healthier and happier. And when you have a strong sense of who you are and what you stand for, that is vital to your overall well-being. Now, the truth is that no matter what stage or season of your life you're in right now, it is highly likely that as you go through different stages, your emotional, your mental, your spiritual, and, and your overall growth is going to deepen and it's going to change to reflect those stages where you are. So this is not a once and done workbook. By using this life path workbook, you're gonna gain more clarity. When you feel stuck and you're not making progress that you had hoped for, or you're feeling like you're just going in the wrong direction, by knowing your life path and going through these practices, it can help you redefine, find, and have clarity and know where your North Star really is. So don't use this as a once and done process. Anytime you start feeling a little stuck and you're not making progress or you're just feeling a little lost, maybe you've reached a new phase of your life, a new season in your life. 
and then go back and and go through this process again. And every time you go through it, you probably will go through it a little quicker because you'll quickly identify those areas where you might have changed, you might have grown, you might have learned something new about yourself or the world. And that's that's what we're here for. So let me introduce you to the Life Path Diagram. Now, I know it looks busy, but we're going to take this one step at a time. Don't let this overwhelm you. This diagram, you can see how everything intersects. So we have four main sections, which are the outside of the diagram. And they ask you questions such as, what do you love to do? What does the world need? What do you get paid to do? And what are you great at? Then you see on the intersection of the diagram, well, here is where we're combining those elements and it helps you to discover your passion, your mission, your contribution, and your profession, which could be your coaching platform, your course, or whatever you are wanting to create. So the four aspects of your life path is going to help you determine which course topics, what business model, what niche is most suited and in alignment with your true self. And so it all comes together. This not only helps you define your business, but it helps you define every aspect within your life. So let's go through the workbook so that you have an overview of what to expect. Now, like I said, you decide how you want to go through the workbook. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to walk you through and give you the overview. But then when you're ready, print the workbook out and decide how you're going to go through each section and then set the time aside to start doing it. So the first section is asking you, what do you love? Now, I know some people, they really have a hard time answering this. And these types of questions sometimes just feel so hard because they don't let themselves dream a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to offer you a quick suggestion. If you have difficulty asking, what do you love? Then switch it and ask yourself, what don't you love? What don't you want to do? And, you know, what I have found is it helps you then to understand what you don't want. And then you come back in to what you do want. So here's some prompts that I have in the workbook for you. It asked you, what did you like doing as a kid? What do you love to do 10 years ago? What did you love doing five years ago? What can you do for hours at a time and just get lost in, in the time? You know, what I asked you to do is write without limits. Have fun with this process. Now, like I said, you can start with a, a linear view and start going through your timeline, which is a great way, or you can just start free flow writing. What do you love or what don't you love? Now, what I want you to do is just write out as much as you can. You know, you can set a timer, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you prefer, and just write free flow writing. Don't censor it. Just let your mind go. Because what I have found is when you just let your mind run wild and, and just start writing everything out, new things start popping up. Your imagination starts taking hold. Your intuition starts coming in. And some of the things that you write down might surprise you. But what you want to do is you just want to write out everything. And then once you're done, you can go back and, and read it and make modifications or add to it or take things out. That's up to you. But this is the first question. Now, we're going to go ahead and walk through this workbook, but like I said, I'm just giving you an overview. We're not actually doing the exercises just yet. So the next question is, what does the world need? Now, this can be a little objective here. So think about it in different ways. And I, I invite you to just explore. Now, this one has been a little difficult for some people at times, but it's okay. Just, just be creative and, and think, what would the world need from you? Now, 
If you're like me, I have a famous song stuck in my head when I'm writing this, you know, and I put it on YouTube and I'm playing it in the background, you know, about what does the world need? I'm not going to sing it, but you, I think you know which one I'm talking about. And I also have found a great article that might help you with defining this one more for you. And the link to that is in the workbook and you can go read that article and maybe get additional guidelines. But basically, the article breaks it down into 10 main topics. And I'm not going to go through them all, but let's let's just take a look at a few of them. So for action, the article explains thinking about what type of actions does the world need from you? What actions would the world want you to take on different topics that are of interest to you? Things such as poverty, climate change, mental health, famine, and others. So if you think, okay, what does the world need from me? What action does the world want me to take? Where's your passions? Are you passionate about the environment, mental health, climate change, different things? So I think if you start putting things into that perspective, then you'll start to be able to see what does the world want you to do? What do you, what gifts and talents do you have inside of you that you can bring to the world? So take a look at some of those examples that I have in the workbook and in that article. And it's going to help you to start being, you know, creative. So maybe the action would be, you know, helping feed the starving, protecting the environment. There's different ways that you can take a look at this. So what is key here is think about as a successful entrepreneur, you're going to have more power to make a difference. The more money you make, the more you have to give. So that's, that's the second prompt here. I want you to just go through this and see what lights you up. What do you see here that you want to move through? What does the world need from you? And take your time and work through this one. Now let's move to the third one. The third one is asking, what do you get paid for? So this section is pretty straightforward and easy. What I recommend is you just list out every job that you've ever had. What did you get paid to do? What did you volunteer to do? And then take a look at what did you like about those jobs? And what did you not like about those jobs? Now, the goal here is to find patterns. Where's the commonality in each one? You know, where where did you feel like you were thriving the most? Where did you think that you was not being able to express yourself? You know, look for what I would like to do is take a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle, what you liked, what you didn't like about each job. What roles did you play? What interactions, what people did you work with? What were you doing? You know, this part, this exercise really helped me to find some golden nuggets that I just never realized. You know, when I went through this and I started looking at all of my jobs, I found a pattern that in every new job I had, I had this habit where in the I would change jobs every three to five years because I was very aggressive with my with my corporate career and I wanted to climb the ladder. But also every three to five years, I was getting bored. So I would learn as much as I could. And then I would get to that one part where perhaps there was a glass ceiling or there wasn't another step for me. And I wanted to keep expanding and growing. So then I would move to the next job. But what I discovered is in every job that I went into, I had the ability to organize, see patterns, and streamline those processes and systems. And in fact, in every job that I have had, except for one, I was able to reduce my workload and that of my teams so that I would end up working from home and only working on average 10 to 20 hours a week. So, you know, with me, I seen that I'm able to simplify processes. I'm able to see patterns. I organize chaos. I'm extremely productive. And let's be honest. I'll be honest with myself here. I don't like to work. I'm not built for a lot of work. 
I'm built for let's get a couple of things done today, work in short little bites of burst of energy, and then call it a day, go have fun. And so that's what my whole business is about, is teaching other people how to be extremely productive and short burst of energies, and then go enjoy your life the rest of the day. So take your time, go through this one, but really dig deep, write everything down. Because I guarantee you, if you start writing everything down, you're going to start seeing some patterns. You're going to start seeing some commonalities that maybe you just never realized before. And I hope that you really get an aha moment like I did with this exercise. Now, the last one is, it's asking you, what are you great at? Now, this one is intended to be a fun question. This is where you can explore those fun hobbies, the things that you love to do, those things that you could spend hours on without even noticing the time had passed. You know, other questions are aimed at looking at, you know, your jobs you had or, or what you was doing. But this one, this one is thinking about all of those things that you dream about. What hobbies, if you had all the time in the world, what would you do if money and time was not an issue? What is it that you love to do? Think about all of those things. It doesn't matter if, if it's a current hobby or if it's a hobby that you've always wanted to do. What we're doing here is just being creative, using your imagination. Because as you go through there, there's going to be little golden nuggets that start bubbling up. And you're going to uncover your, your innate gifts and talents, your abilities. You know, you might think, well, this seems irrelevant. I wanted to learn how to, like with me, I wanted to learn how to doodle and sketch and draw. Well, that seemed irrelevant to me. But when I wrote it out and I started going deeper and exploring it, well, I learned that creativity is a huge aspect of my personality and that I have some innate gifts and talents there. Now, I'm not an artist, of course, no. And I can't sing a dance, but... I've learned that I do have some gifts there. And I hope that as you go through it, you'll find, you know, what, what are those hidden gifts and talents that you've been maybe suppressing because you've been so busy with doing this and that. So, you know, just take your time with this. Now, the problem that I see with so many, and I've been told, you know, something along these lines too, is that, you know, we're always being told what is right for us, what is wrong for us, what we should do, what, what we have to do. But the good news here is that now is the time to step into your own personal power and either discover or rediscover what you are great at, what you love. Some tips that I can give you is go look at the books you read. Look at what you do on the weekends or in your spare time. Think about what you did as a kid. What lights you up? What is fun? What is light? What do you do to receive compliments? And if you can't think of anything, you can ask friends and family. But I really urge you to go inside and just start asking questions. Something that I have done in the past is I've went into uh, Google, Google search, and just ask, what are some hobbies for adult women? And, you know, there's there's a list out there of 100 different hobbies that you can do. And you just start going through that list and some things will just let you up like, oh, yeah, I forgot. I've always wanted to do that. So you never know what's going to pop up. Here's a little uh, story. Now, my husband has always been a very hard worker and he's had his own business, and he really never had hobbies other than we would go boating and fishing and camping and traveling and different things. But he really never had hobby because he never left himself, you know, take the time to have a hobby because he was always working so hard. So about, I think it was about a year or two years ago, um, I finally told him he, he could retire. And... Um, but I told him, if you retire, you have to find a hobby. You can't just sit around collecting dust. So, I mean, it, it's a big joke in my, in my family, but he, he just could not come up with hobbies. 
So I went through this practice with him. And what he discovered is he discovered he loves woodworking and, and creating things out of wood. And he has made some of the most wonderful birdhouses, bird feeders, shadow boxes, uh, lanterns, and so much more. But he never realized how much he loved it and how good he was. I mean, he, he is excellent. But he didn't, he didn't really know that until he stopped and took the time to play with it. So maybe you have never given yourself permission to play. But that is what I want for you. I want you to take time, give yourself permission to just play. And like I said, I love to doodle and paint and do a little bit of this and that. And so you never know what's going to come up. Just let yourself be creative, let your imagination flow. And you might discover that you have a great passion for a brand new hobby that you have been pushing aside. Okay, so now... Once you have those four main sections completed, the next step is to review two of the sections that intersect and overlap. Now, the questions of what are you great at and what do you love? Well, that is in alignment with your passions. The questions of what do you love and what does the world need? That is in alignment with your mission. Now, the question of what does the world need and what can you get paid for? That is in alignment with your contribution. And the questions of what can you get paid for and what are you great at is in alignment with your profession. The end result is your life path that shows you your passion, your mission, your contribution, along with your profession. So the best way to work through this part of the exercise is to use the workbook and write out those things that match or are in common between the two sections. As an example, you would have, what do you, what do you love to do? And what do you love? And you can see that intersection. And this is your passion. And you can do this with each one of the four sections. Those are all in, in your workbook. And so again, just take your time and start going through it. Now, if you start to see that, well, I don't really see things that are connecting. I don't, I don't see the commonalities. If that's the case, I invite you to go back to those questions and revisit them because we all have commonalities. We all have these alignments and perhaps you just need to spend some more time to dig a little deeper. Okay, so now it's your turn. That was the complete overview of the process. This is something that we don't do in a workshop style setting because you really need to be completely focused on doing this. You need to let your imagination and your creativity flow. So your action plan for this lesson is to go through that workbook, download it, print it out, set yourself up with a schedule. And again, you decide, do you want to do it all at one time? Do you want to break it out into... 30 minutes or 60 minute increments and work on each phase? Do you want to do it over a course of a week or two weeks? It's up to you. You get to decide. But please, I encourage you to take this part of this mini membership, extremely important. This is your foundation. This is your life path. This is your North Star. Once you have this information locked in, understood, it's going to open up the whole world for you. So I really encourage you to spend time evaluating what you're uncovering. Play with it. Put the pieces together. Have fun. Okay. Now, let me just say here before we close out that nobody, and I mean no one, can tell you what it all means or how your thoughts can come together to find your intersections and uncover your passion, your mission, your purpose, and so on. This is uniquely you. The other person that can come to a conclusion and tell you something is not going to be meaningful for you. The only person that can come to a conclusion is you. If you showed up and put your notes down 
you will be able to uncover your life path. And I can tell you from experience, if you show your notes to 10 different people, they're all going to come up with 10 different answers. And that's not going to be helpful for you. Believe me, I know, because for years I struggled and I was frustrated because I did not have this clarity. So for this exercise, just know that you can't get it wrong and that throughout our life, our mission, our purpose, our passions, and our contributions, well, they're going to change. And, and they're all based on what season and phase of the life that you are in right now. So it's not like you're locked into this life path for your entire life. It's not intended to be that way. It's intended to show you where you are now based on what phase and season of your life you're in. So I encourage you, just have fun. Now, one more thing. This is your turn to go out and do this, but your action plan is go through the exercise, download the workbook, go through it. But once you're done or as you're going through it, please make any notes and comments that you want inside the member portal. This is your private portal for your own notes and no one else can see them. But also, please go to the Facebook group and post your aha moments. Post any questions you might have. Post what you're thinking about. Tell us, tell us your opinion on this process. But I also asked you to become an active member and post on three other sister posts. We're all in this together. We're all here to support each other. And in doing so, we're going to create a wonderful group that we're all going to support each other and hold each other accountable to achieve our greatness. So have fun. And when you're done, you can go into the next lesson.